Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Zephron Olive, and it's time for another Brewer's Minute. So last week, we had a major standard banning, and this week, we're going to kind of build off that and talk about brewing in a wide open new format. It almost feels like standard just went through a rotation with ramen on bread, with teamer energy, both getting smashed by banning. Suddenly we have all these rivals of Ixalan cards. We got Ixalan cards that never really saw play before. So we have this really fresh, wide open format. We don't have any big tournaments on the horizon. The pro tour is modern, which means for the next few weeks and maybe a couple of months, we're going to be in this crazy wide open format where anything seems possible. People are going to be trying new and off-the-wall things, and basically anything goes. So the thing about this wide-open format, while it is awesome for brewers because it's a blast having this wide-open format where we don't have a solid target. Like, before, we knew if we were going to brew, we had to have a plan for beating Team or Energy. We had to have a plan for beating Ramen on Bread. That's changed. Now we don't know what to expect or what's going to happen, and it really changes how you brew and what makes brews good or bad in the early infancy of a format like this. So today, we're going to talk about three big things to keep in mind when you're brewing in a fresh, wide-open format like we're just getting into now with Rivals of Ixalan post ban standards. So, a quick reminder before we break it all down, if you enjoy Brewer's Minute and the other series here on the channel, it would be amazing of you if you could take a quick second, click that subscribe button down in the corner of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So, let's talk about are three kind of rules for brewing in a fresh format, like Rivals of Ixalan post-band standard. First off, you gotta expect anything, or expect nothing maybe is a better way of putting it. Basically, in a normal format, after a format's kind of aged and matured and we got tons of lists and we've had big tournaments, you kind of know what to expect. At this point, we don't know what to expect, not just as far as decks. Like, we don't know, maybe we'll run to Merfolk or Dinosaurs or Vampires or Tokens. There's so many different things that people are gonna be trying, but as far as what's in the decks as well. So, for example, I was playing a tokens deck last week with Watley, and it was super sweet. We were playing against Merfolk, and kind of a rough idea. There'd been a couple lists published of Merfolk that looked fairly similar, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, we got wrecked by Herald of Secret Streams, a card that was in none of the Merfolk lists that had been published, not a card that we really expected a Merfolk player to be playing. They didn't have that crazy of a plus one plus one counter theme. And then all of a sudden we just died to Herald of Secret Streams. And that's the kind of stuff that happens in a fresh, wide open format. People are going to be tempted to throw that one Herald of Secret Streams in their deck just to see what it does and how it works and if it's good. And you're going to get on the receiving end of that sometimes and lose because of it. Also, along the same lines, the expect the unexpected thing has an impact on the kind of decks you want to play. So, for example, control is a little bit sketchy because you don't know what you need to answer. The Herald of Secret Streams example, if your removal doesn't line up with that, uh, you could get wrecked out of nowhere. Are people going to be playing crazy enchantments to flip into legendary land artifacts, etc.? We don't really know at this point, so it's much harder to play control decks because control decks are about lining up your answers with the format, and if you don't know the format or even know what cards are going to be in the decks that are in the format, it's really really hard to make that work and this also means that metagame decks are basically off the table at this point so I know people have been excited about a return of Turbo Fog for example with Humana's Awakening being printed and while I think we have the pieces again to make Turbo Fog Turbo Fog is a metagame deck where you need the metagame to be primarily decks that are beating down with creatures and we don't know what the metagame looks like right now so while you can play Turbo Fog for fun I wouldn't want to play it and expect to have success with it until we get a few more weeks into the format, really see is control big, decks that are winning with Approach of the Second Sun, decks that are winning with Planeswalkers, things that a Turbo Fog deck doesn't really interact well with, or is everyone beating down with Merfolk and Vampires and Dinosaurs, then Turbo Fog's going to be great. So we just don't know what the metagame looks like yet, so it's really hard to play those metagame decks. So that's number one, expect anything, and let this expectation of anything being possible kind of dictate the way that you go about building your decks. Second, be proactive. That's the easiest thing to do, is just not play the control decks right now, not play the metagame decks right now, definitely not the metagame decks, and 
trend towards playing more aggressive decks that have a game plan of killing the opponent rather than reacting to the opponent trying to kill you. So, for example, Pirates can be an aggro deck. They can be a mid-range deck. They can be a pretty controlling deck. There's a bunch of different options in the Pirate tribe. Right now, I would be most excited to play an aggro Pirate deck because I don't really want to worry about whether my Kite Sail Freebooter is going to be good or not, whether my removal is going to line up with my opponent's answers if I'm playing a more slower controlling pirate deck. I think that you're better off just beating down and taking advantage of the fact that people are not only trying everything, but because they are trying everything, there's going to be suboptimal decks out there. Like Herald of Secret Streams, my guess is it's probably wrong, but people don't know what's wrong yet. So they're still trying it. And that means you can take advantage of some of these slightly clunky cards that maybe won't be in the top builds of these decks a month from now or two months from now by being proactive, killing your opponent, attacking, attacking, attacking. So this makes me interested in things like Merfolk, maybe Vampires kind of on the fringes if you can build it aggressively. Mono Black Aggro seems like it could be in a good spot right now. So for the next few weeks, I think that while you can play anything for fun, obviously, from a more competitive perspective, I think you get a benefit from playing aggressive, proactive, force your opponent to answer you decks rather than playing reactive, try to answer your opponent's decks because the reactive decks care about the metagame and care about what the opponent's playing when a deck like aggro pirates you don't really care your game plan is to kill your opponent you're the aggro in every matchup you play and you're just going to try to beat your opponent down if they have the answers great good job opponent if they don't have the answers you get to take advantage of them stumbling around with a suboptimal build of whatever they're playing and stealing the wins Finally, number three, aim broad. So this kind of ties into the other stuff we're talking about. But when you don't know what specific threats you need to answer, the best thing you can do is just try to play cards that answer everything. So, for example, right now, I like things like Cast Out, Veraska's Contempt, Fatal Push. These are cards that don't really care as much about what your opponent's playing. Your Cast Out is going to kill Herald of Secret Streams. It's going to kill Hazorat. It's going to kill a one drop. It gets a Planeswalker. So playing these broad answer cards are better than normal right now. And then in the future, once we see what the format looks like, how aggressive is it? How many cheap creatures are there? How many expensive creatures? What's the toughness on creatures look like? That's when stuff like Lightning Strike and Baffling End and Moment of Craving, all that stuff could end up being super, super good. Like if Mono Red Aggro, whatever we're going to call it now that Ramen on Bruins is banned, is a big deck in the format, or an aggressive Merfolk list is a big deck in the format, something like Moment of Craving could even end up sneaking into the main deck if it kills a lot of things in the format, but we just don't know right now, because it's a new format and anything is possible and people are trying all different kinds of things. So until things kind of shake out and we see what the format looks like, if you're choosing between something kind of narrow, but potentially powerful in certain situations, and something that's maybe a little bit more expensive but broader and deals with a lot of things rather than a small section of things choose the broad answer at this point until we see what the metagame looks like and that's when you can kind of narrow in your answers based on specific decks specific threats specific toughnesses and converted mana costs and all that stuff because we just don't know what it's going to look like yet Anyway, those are some things to keep in mind as you're brewing in this very exciting, super wide open, really fun Rivals of Ixalan post band standard. So let me know what you think. What decks are you working on now that the format is wide open? What are you most excited to play? What are your rules for brewing in a wide open format like that? Let me know those as well. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video! If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.